meant for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. <laughs> Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician. Dish best bottom all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So. Mm. Holiday. Drew, you said a word when I was drinking it. Holiday evening. It took so, a beat, but it was right. good. You let, got let me it. finish it. No, no, I'm just sorry. saying, hold on a second. It's, it's a letter day. I read letter day. I'll grant you. I actually spoke during your drinking. I, I didn't act like a, some sort of marionette. Drew, some, sort of, some sort of, uh, what do they call those things, the dummies? So normally we talk over each other for a long time, and then I lean over and take a little sip of something, and then there's about four seconds of yeah. dead air, and then I come back, and then you start yeah. talking when I come so, back. So I've decided from now on. You took a three count and said so. From now on, I'm going to say so when you drink. All right, good. Just to prove that you are not actually the the uh, ventriloquist behind me. Here we go. Here we Ready? go. Ready? Take a sip. I'm gonna take a sip. So it's a holiday. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And you would think on a holiday <sighs> there'd be uh, no fr- no traffic on the freeway, wouldn't you? Well, here's what I would think. I know where you're going with this. Uh, there was not much traffic earlier today, about three or four o'clock. That's at true. least it seemed to me. Yeah, it was around. around and around. I figure people would be doing. God knows what you do on Easter these days, but then uh, I figures. Here's what I figure. I would figure that at nine, eight, nine, ten o'clock, people be coming back from uh, coming out of town. And yeah, that yeah. Kind of I think. Yeah. I think the. But but you wouldn't think it to be just jammed in the front. Yeah, it, it was ridiculous. crowded. It was crowded. And then another thing shocked me tonight. I heard you use the word shun. You were talking to one of your friends as you walked in here. I thought you must shun him. Yes. And I thought to shun. Oh my God. I've never heard an, a, a human with an X and a Y chromosome. That's a dude. Ooh, less, less. Hold on, Chris. That's a dude. A, a dude with uh, seemingly excessive male characteristics. Mm-hmm. Sh- shun. Yeah. I'm sure. Sh- I, 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 well, you get you're older. Gay. You get older. You start producing uh, estrogen. You more estrogen. All right. You, yeah, you I'll buy that. learn to shun. Oh, good. Okay. Good time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all I, right. I think. I think this is a. This is a follow-on. To uh, last week when we had uh, uh, Cuthbert in here, yes. Alicia Cuthbert, yeah. and she told you you were too old, yeah, and your testes just shrink, That's shriveled smarted. up. The estrogen went up. That was an iron. Shunning. That was an iron shanked boot right nice. in the groin. Well, and that shut down the testosterone, and now you're shunning. Yeah, it's good times. Too old, and then yeah, you were shot. <laughs> yeah, that was there. rough. Yeah, Listen, Alicia Cuth- <laughs> Cuthbert was in here. I don't know. She was twenty one. I She's twenty one. You know, She's baby my whole child. thing about Hollywood, though, is that if you're a uh, successful guy like myself, you should be able to date who uh, you know should be able to date like um, you and Tony Zygos. Curtis. Yeah, you and Tony Curtis be dating Zion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. No, well, it's anyway. just like you guys seem like teenagers. <laughs> yeah. Your voices are like old. And guess who's back? Yeah. yeah. Engineer Anderson. Gonna just dump a little salt in our wound. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah. Ron Perlman coming in here uh, tomorrow night. He is uh, Hellboy. Hellboy uh, number. I guess it was number one at the box office last week, and then it went down to number two because uh, because everyone went to see the Passions for Easter. Right. Yeah. And I uh, imagine it'll go back. Uh, if there's any God, it'll go back the, uh, to uh, number one again. How the girl next door do? Uh. Who? Anderson? I don't know, because uh, maybe Anderson will know. Can you look uh, that up? I know uh, Alamo didn't do all that uh, great, and there was a couple other uh, couple other movies I can't remember. I was thinking to myself that uh, this New York Minute thing that I worked on with the Olsen twins had mm. better do well, because they are spending a fortune yeah, on, on advertising. advertising. Oh, my God. I've just seen one billboard Woo. so far. Yeah, but I've seen a, a hundred television commercials. Oh, really? And, and every time I go to the movie theater or the trailer. Are you in the trailer? On, in the movies. At but the movie. not on the TV. Not on the TV. All right. That's still pretty good. That's good times. Yeah, that's good. Well, maybe it will be a big hit. Let see. Why shouldn't it be? Got the Olsen twins. Yeah, this girl's, uh, they crap, uh, they put varnish on it, make paperweights out of it, make uh, $10 million <laughs> a year. Everything that comes out of them turns a profit. Do you understand? Yeah. They lacquer their Duke. <laughs> they sell it as paper. They, they stamp their initials in it. They sell them as paperweights. They made Nine nine point eight seven, almost ten million dollars last year. Just uh, on Duke, on 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 loose sided Duke. Duke. And now I know why they're not coming on the show. That's right. Now listen, they they're they, not coming they on the show because they're faggoty. Uh, whatever they got, their publicists are horrible. It's yeah, nothing Anderson. to do with them. Go ahead, Anderson. Girl next door came in ten spot. Ten. 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 Not bad. Six. Million. Ah, how much? Six million. Six million. That's about what they were predicting. Seven. They were. It's ten. Uh, 
Uh, oh, and Alamo came in. Uh, what, were, what was the order, Anderson? Do you have it? Yeah, it's behind me, so hold on. It All right, says, uh, screw it. Passion of, of His Christness. Yes. Hellboy. Hellboy. Well, Chris looking at it. Chris too. knows it. Uh, yeah. The Family Vacation. Oh, The Family Alamo. Vacation. Alamo, yeah. Walking Tall. Oh, the, the yeah. remake. Yeah, sure. Not the original. Yeah. Home on the Range, which is the new Disney, uh, uh, Disney yeah. little color yeah. cartoon there. All right. Here we go. I'm bored. Scooby-Doo 2. Oh, yeah. Which Cla- was, classic. was not bad. You, you saw you, that. We had to get Matthew kids? back up here. I did take my kids to it, and I really thought it was quite, really, I, I didn't get that, oh, my God, I'm wasting my life feeling, which what? you get most films that I see with kids. And Matthew did an amazing job at this time. Yeah. I mean, he really, it's like he really sort of has a facility now with that character. He's so a gifted Des fan. Well, this, he's. No, he look, I, here, here's, here's what happens. I, no, look, I swear to Christ, I, you're right. I, in my book, we got all these uh, actors who are playing some uh, gimp with a uh, easel in front of them, doing a little painting, and everyone applauds because the guy has a, a lisp and uh, he only has the use of one eye. And all, all of a sudden, we got to give Daniel Day Lewis another Oscar. To me, the tall order is when is being Jim Morrison yeah. or or being Shaggy. Yes, yeah. Like if you said to me, "Hey, do you think you could portray a uh, a uh, struggling gay painter?" I'd say, "Yeah, give me a month. I, I could probably work something up for you." Right. But if they said you could do Shaggy, I'd just be like, um, "Right." Uh, like we got to go, Daddy O, and yeah. it'd be like it'd be the lamest thing in the world. It's bringing something to life that has a very stringent experience, right? We all know what it is. Yeah. And you better bring it back out exactly the way we expect yeah. it or it's not going to work. No, I know. I mean, here, yeah. seriously, he is shaggy. Yeah. And he's uh, laughed at in the Hollywood community. Yeah, is like, he really? Well, no. I mean, yeah. I mean, but he's not, he's not, that's not considered a serious role. Correct? It's considered lightweight fluff, mm. which it is. But in terms of the, uh, it is a tall order. You know what oh I mean? It's 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 a it's a lightweight nothing movie, but actually becoming this guy was a cartoon. Huge, yeah, yeah. doing the voice exactly right, the yeah. mannerisms and whatever. He doesn't even have a guy to go off of. He has a cartoon to go off of. Right. And nice. this time he had a facility <laughs> with it that really I thought was kind of right. nice. Very great. Yeah, for give, him, give him an Academy Award. That's right. I'm just saying. I'm with you. Yes. Yeah. I'm, here, here's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, uh, what's her name? Anderson's got to get the uh, best supporting role on uh, on uh, my uh, my cousin Vinny. Uh, Marissa what's her Tomei. Name? Marissa Tomei. Ten years ago. <laughs> okay. Well, the point is, is she's just playing some Jersey chick. She's yeah. probably from there. Right. right. Uh, here, here's the big thing. Chew some gum while you talk. There you go. I don't know. To me, playing Shaggy would be a taller order. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, Let's I... see Marissa Tomei play Shaggy. Mm. Uh huh. See, it shows shows how tall that order is. Here we go. Steve? Yeah. Yeah. This is all energy left over from uh, Val Kilmer being uh, snubbed for the uh, Doors movie, mm-hmm. which I think he should have won the Oscar for. Go ahead, Steve. All right. Uh, got kind of a, pro- a list of problems, but I'll start you off with the basics. Um, since about September, I've had a really bad problem of going out and trying to find some other girls uh, cheating on my girlfriend. But the thing is, if I just can't find it, I'll go and pay for it. Mm. Hmm. How long has that been going on for? Uh, since September of last year. And how often do you do it? Uh, I've probably been with about fifteen different women. M- yeah. All of them prostitutes, or? Yeah. Well, that's just prostitutes. Just prostitutes. Mm-hmm. All right. What's the how question? much? Uh, how much does the average r- prostitute run? Um. Probably average is about two hundred to two fifty. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Hold on a second. Drew and I were laughing uh, last week about that show, uh, Hookers on the Brink. Is it on the brink or on the edge? Whatever. Never can remember yeah. it. Maybe Anderson knows. It was like HBO, a Showtime show where they just follow hookers around. They mic them up. They get in the car. The Johns get into the car with them. It's like, okay, sugar, $15 for, for BJ, $20 for sex. And then, and then you hear the guy go, Come on, girl. You got to do me better than that. <laughs> so it's like, that 20 bucks for sex, huh? You flip the guy at the airport 20 bucks for uh, grabbing your bag. Really? 20? What are you trying to say? <laughs> yeah, maybe I should be getting more. I'm just saying, trying to talk someone down from a $15 uh, BJ. What, what, uh, what do you want? Uh, okay, you're right. That, that's, 14 dollars 14 dollars uh, No, no, you're right. This is this is grossly inflated. It's, it's, it's about $8. Eight or nine dollars. Really? 
The chick's, the chick's got gap teeth and she's missing an eye. <laughs> All right. It it is true. It is true that uh, they're like you know the factory seconds, so to speak, of uh, hookers. I mean, this isn't your you know high class uh, call girl. This ain't uh, what's her nose from uh, Pretty Woman, right? But Julia. But uh, still, they're in their twenties. They're reasonably built. They're not missing any limbs. I just like the fact that the guy's going to haggle with them over the twenty dollar BJ. Twenty dollars. <laughs> Oh, and then, look like. and then the other thing we're amazed by is that them in their car with yep. their voice license plate picks all out. Right. You can let that go in the air. You have to set a release. The, guy, on the guy's that? no uh, has no idea. Yeah. I that five years of doing the man show, if I wanted to wear a pair of goddamn Nikes, I had to put a piece of tape over the Nike. Otherwise, uh, we'd get sued. And uh, they uh, they just hide the cameras. Uh, have the chick go in. It, sit there, you hear the guy's voice, you see his, you know, he drives a green beat up uh, Cherokee or Gremlin with uh, Bondo on one of the fenders. You don't think his wife just could sit home and sees his car pull up and hears his voice? Oh. And as Drew mentioned on the way to the bathroom, uh, his preference, too. What? Like, uh, how much extra for the thumb? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, when the wife, like, if your wife, your passionate Mandra, if your, your wife would know what you were ordering. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like I recognize your order. Yeah, like if they look. Like if, the, the... if they look at a receipt from a restaurant right. that you ate at with two people, you go, "Yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 he's a BLT guy. Yeah, yeah. That's what he gets." Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, good times. Hey, good times. So, Steve, what is your question for us? Like, I, I really, the girl I'm with, I have a steady girlfriend for past year and a half. No, Steve, and, right, Steve, just break what, up with her. What, yeah. you, what, what is the question? I mean, I need to get some help to like stop this. All right. I, I were you? Were you ever, all right. Let me ask you some simple questions. Were you sexually abused growing up? No. Are you an alcoholic or addict? No. You've never been addicted to a substance. No, my mom's a cokehead and my and uh, does marijuana. And my dad's kind of an alcoholic as it is, so I right, tried so, to steer clear of that growing up. All right, but you were not abused in any way. No. Um, are you a Mormon? Yeah. It really started, like, the whole thing really started I <laughs> when I got back from Iraq. Like, as soon, like as I got back, me and my girlfriend had a whole lot more problems. And then uh, I kind of lost the unit I was in. And, uh, I, well, I lost some friends overseas on her birthday. And when I got back, I, had, uh, I was transferred out of the unit, and I went to this, the whole other side of the country. And mm -hmm. that's where it happened. Like, or what happened? It, the that's prostitutes? when I started looking for other women. Yeah, that's when the prostitutes started. All right, started. well, you, this may be, you know, sometimes people just like starting to use drugs, they will use sex as a way of trying to manage overwhelming feelings. And this may be sort of a, a way to conceptualize this as a post-traumatic stress disorder of types. Yeah. That you had this horrible experience in Iraq. You now can't, you know, it's too scary to be intimate. You have all these overwhelming feelings. Doesn't everyone who goes to Iraq have a horrible experience? If you I'm, really I'm just a, break I it imagine, down. I, you know. I mean... You, do you have to say you had a horrible experience in Iraq, or could you just say, I've been to Iraq? You, you, I think I've been to Iraq is enough, but and he, actually, it, he, he went back well, and he, he had a horrible experience. Well, if you come back in a body bag, That's an then, extra then we should say something about it. If you just went to Iraq and came back, we'll assume you had a horrible well, I, experience. I'm imagining not everyone is in, in battle, in combat. Not everyone loses friends. <laughs> No, well, that's what this guy. Did. Not everybody. Uh, I just mean everybody in has Iraq a is, ha is yeah. having a horrible experience. Yeah, I, I, I Iraqis, animals, but, but, everybody, lawn jockeys, all of them. But are you, are you now? Now, what are you suggesting we do with Iraq? Mm -hmm. You change your tune. It sounds like mm -hmm. about Iraq. No, I'm just saying it's a horrible place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if the people really. I don't really uh, know if the people are governorable. If that uh, I didn't uh, screw that word up too much, governorable. Govern a ball. There we go. You know what I mean? I'm not well, sure if they're ready for it. I mean, things like that have been said about Vietnam and Philippines uh, at the end of each war. These, these things are said. Uh, and eventually people uh, come well, around to the former Philippi governments in Cambodia. Uh, huh? Well, yeah. Well, that, that's a little different situation. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Each oh, little over different, there. But, but still, you know, horrible civil strife, horrible divisions. and Yeah. War and then uh, people behave a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, anyway. Anyway, they're like the wild stallions that can't be broken, <laughs> except for <laughs> not in a good way. Yeah, I was talking to you know, that Bobby Brown show that's about to come out on TV, the reality show where they're following him around in cameras. Mm. Yeah. And I heard how they're spinning that. It's like well, he's a free spirit. <laughs> the, oh my God! I cannot let that one. That that please g give me a camera. Yeah. I mean a free spirit. Well. 
Oh, my God. When did sociopathy become free-spirited? Sociopathy? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Hey, uh, so listen. Steve should go to... Uh, uh, Am- no, no, wait a minute. Is it S.A.? S- S- Yes. Well, I'm not necessarily. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not sure he's a sex addict. He, he is clearly using sex as in response to all this trauma he's been through. I think he just needs to go somewhere have an evaluation and see if somebody can come up with a diagnostic sort of yeah. idea of what's going on with him, and then refer him. Maybe SA, certainly a twelve step wouldn't hurt. All right. And by and, the way, and, I mean, I mean no, off. I mean no off. ill to Bobby Brown. I'm being, I'm being facetious. No, but, he's, he's, but he's great, a great people, great people. But but I mean the free spirit thing is that we cannot let. When people act out, I mean, Michael Jackson's a free spirit too, and yeah, you know what I'm saying, yeah, there, there's, there's more to these stories than free spiritedness, and needs to be looked at honestly and critically. Yeah, no, I'm uh, not meant to hurt anybody. In fact, might help them be able, be able to be seen more honestly as well, who they are. Okay, let, let's just let's just talk about this for a second because right. in the past the news wouldn't really get involved with a lot of these stories. Now. And I think this is the part you object to, and I object to as well. They act like they're getting involved with it because yes. they're concerned, and because right. they want to provide some sort of public forum for right. these kind of things. But they never get to the problem. No, they just keep the spin going. Yeah, and it's and it's more like you know they wrap it up by going, "He's a deeply spiritual man, yeah. <laughs> and with the help of his things yeah, and the yeah. help of the Lord, exactly. he will find the strength." That, well, no, he right. needs rehab. Right, is what he needs. Right, whoever, yes, or exactly. whatever it yes. is. Yes, and there's too much BS all around. Uh, people's Absolutely. inner light and the in it and yes it's 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 bs and they never do get to it right so and now it's insulting insane. like i wish we were it was back how it was where they just wouldn't even talk about it mm-hmm. anymore it would be shameful it would be shameful yeah. for them to actually go and talk to yes. these people right. or to make this this or to uh, be these, shaming to the people these stories weren't newsworthy yeah all right jessica yeah you're 22 mm-hmm. what's up um, I had a breast resu- reduction surgery uh, a while back, and my breasts are still tender, and I'm kind of wondering about how long it's going to be until that mm-hmm. stops. Mm-hmm. The, the, what part what'd you, of... Where'd you all are quiet now, down Sorry? Where'd you go from? What were you? A uh, double D, up, kind of in between that and a triple. That and a triple D? Mm-hmm. Somebody said there was not a triple D. I thought there wasn't a triple D. Well, then somebody ought to tell Victoria's Secret that. Victoria's Secret makes a triple D? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you my plan, Drew. Well, they, they should. They have I'm the gonna universal. T- I'm mm-hmm. going to tag those triple D bras, just like uh, you know, they tag, tag the uh, caribou, caribou yeah, yeah. In, in, in Alaska that's to good. figure out their migration. Yeah. And then we're going to follow them yeah, home. That's good. You know what well, I'm saying? Yeah, you have a little radar device. Yeah, they are, they they do that on clothing already, where sure. they just put that little magnetic thing well, on there. That's in case you get into, a, into an avalanche or something. I'll be in a van outside yeah. the Galleria. Boop. You'll need to have Seth Green Boop. behind the radar. <laughs> Isn't Boop. that his role now? Yeah, I'll have Seth Green. He'll yeah. be the nerdy guy yeah. back there. Right. Uh, and, the computer. Uh, right. And I'll have, uh, I'll have like, John Favreau <laughs> in a campy hat driving the van, smoking a cigar. And I'll, be, and I'll say stuff like, let's roll. And then uh, then we, we, we have visual on the unit. It'll just be a chick in a uh, minivan, and we'll, we'll, we'll follow her home. And then we'll set up, you know, we'll bivouac outside the house and set up a surveillance camp. But let, let's agree that if, if anyone were going to set up the universal... Uh, we call it language or system for bras for cup size it, it would be victoria's secret they, they, they have they yeah. should just claim it now they should yeah all right so victoria's secret makes a triple d <laughs> therefore yeah. therefore it exists uh, yeah i guess oh and uh hold on let me say this too um uh you know it's all this uh everyone's on us about talking about uh, you know content what's uh-huh. on the radio fcc all this kind of stuff content on uh, television uh these victoria they canceled that. Secret. The TV show? No. The commercials. Oh. oh. Spankable. <laughs> I mean, spankable at uh, 7, 8 in the evening. I really? mean, you're, you're sitting there watching Entertainment Tonight at 7.30 at night. That goes in the Victoria <laughs> Secret commercial. Yeah, kind of oiled up chick and, you know, tight bra and panties, cleavage for days, walking in slow motion, you know, down the runway, sort of jiggle. I mean, they're not wearing bathing suits. They don't, they don't make bathing suits. They don't make short shorts. They don't make halter tops. They make panties and bras. I, I just file that under. We, we we just can't decide what we are. I, I we I, really can't. I, I bathing know, suits I mean, are okay. Underwear not okay. Yeah, but but maybe bathing suits still, aren't even okay. Still, like uh, you know, I'm not prude, but you know, if you're sitting there with your uh, eight year old and you're just watching TV at uh, seven o'clock, seven thirty at night, and this chick's sort of, she's jiggling. Mm. I mean, it, 
I, I don't. No one ever says anything about it. I don't want him to say anything about it. I, I enjoy it, but I'm just saying. Uh, I, I'm not, Victoria's Secret has seemed to have slid under the radar for the moment. For the moment, uh, in terms of their stuff, you know why? You know the thing that's interesting about it mm. shows just as much skin. Chicks are a little better looking. It's a little classier. If one of the chicks had like a tattoo and a knife scar, and uh, it was uh, Fredericks of Hollywood. They wouldn't. They wouldn't get away with it. Mm. It'd be. It would be considered in poor taste. Mm. There's something. Therefore, if they try to take it off the air, it should be discriminatory. Well, if you can show evidence that they've let other stuff go by with lesser looking <laughs> models. Yeah, because oh. they got they got Bob Dylan singing in the background. <sighs> they should be. Just the, yeah, they should be pulled that. off for Bob yeah. Dylan singing. But uh, six. It's good. Good spankable stuff. Oh Chris, no, Chris, right? right? Yeah, it's solid. Oh, Chris, woo, that was an enthusiastic. Yeah. Jessica? Yeah. All right, so you were triple D. Mm, yeah, between that and a double. What size uh, person are you? Um, I'm pretty slim. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, thank you. And, uh, <laughs> okay, and... Uh, you done? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's... Uh, all right. I don't know. You say what size. You know, no one will ever give you the size. You know, well, size. I work out regularly, and I'm about yeah. 125, 130. Yeah. So you must have some at. kind of rocking bod on you, baby doll. It was becoming an issue. Really? Well, when you wow. weigh that much and you got boobs that big, you're kind of falling over. Boatsy, boatsy. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, now, what, did you have a boyfriend at the time? Uh, yeah, but we broke up. Yeah. Well, man's... Man has his limits, and and uh, what did, they got you down to? What a D? I'm a C now. A C. All right. And uh, and where's the tenderness around the scars or where? Um, kind of all over. Yeah, it's a surgery, you know, and uh, sometimes a year and a half. Boy, do you have any numb spots? Um, a little bit on the nipple part, like the. Has it, has it grown at all since the surgery? No. So it stayed the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. What describe the pain and where is it that sort of thing? It's just really super tender, especially on the underside, uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. where the scars are. Yeah, but mm -hmm. uh, above that as well. Hey, I have an areola question. Well, hold yeah. on, so I'll just finish the question. Well, Did, you, this... you think about your answer well, while I I, uh, I, I talk areola. Uh. Hey, Jessica. Mm hmm. I want to actually have a little show called uh, Adam's uh, Areola Corner. Sounds nice. Where yeah, it's not exact. It's not a whole half-hour show. It's like one of these uh, nine-minute things. Infomercials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I go. You need to know. At the end of it, and I go, and uh, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Adam Carolla's Areola Corner. Yeah, and it sounds like it would sell. A little rainbow. It, it went, yeah, the rainbow. thought you needed to know. Yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, how did you have your areola shrunk <laughs> now that the now the breast mass is taken away? Almost, you know, sort of like a balloon with more air in it. Mm-hmm. Is that has that happened? The breast mass is shrunk, reduced. Well, yeah. I mean, there's there's less stuff in there. I'm not sure what you're asking. I, I don't think she. What, what, I, what I, I about the world's? What the hell? She didn't what, hear you. She, she didn't speak Japanese didn't on listen. the radio all day. Is that no. all you people hear? Is just I've been mean, just speaking in like Cambodian Tons. or something. Yes, <laughs> 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 That's where I turned Japanese at the end. I really just, I, no one has any idea what I'm ever talking about. I, I just don't think she was listening. Okay. Jessica? Yeah, sorry, you're, you're a little dull. I was, I was fading out. I wasn't you, should still be, you should still be punished for not listening. <laughs> so, okay, sorry. remember we're talking about, a, okay, we're talking about areolas, yeah, right? areolas, got it. And I, I asked, have your areola shrunk now that some of your breast mass has been removed? Oh, yeah, yeah, they took some of that off, right? I have giant areolas and normal-sized breasts. They, they, oh, should, they, they cut they, around They it. took some of the areola off? Yeah. Huh. Well, I don't know. It's not always... I, I don't know if they always do that on a breast reduction. Well, there's some women running around with some funky-looking breasts, then. Well, there's some women that have big breasts and small areolas. In hmm. which case, you would do a breast reduction and would actually get the nipple and the areola down. Right. And, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Are you otherwise happy with the procedure? Oh, yeah. Yeah, best thing I ever did for myself. All right. Yeah. Now the, the but it's the worst that could happen. It's a song. Yeah. All right, yeah. we got to go to break. But let's just say, that, that irritation, that could become chronic. I mean, a year and a half, things really that should have healed by now. And so yeah. I... Yeah. 
you may want to talk to the surgeon again about sometimes they remove scar and things that can be the source of the irritation. Right. Go back but, and talk uh, to the yeah, surgeon. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That's an unusual. And, and, and see if you can get that areola back from him and send it out to us. To we'll get you, you a windbreaker. To you. Yeah. I'll to take a, that. Adam's Corner. I'll take that. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam Ness. Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Ron Perlman, Hellboy, is going to be in here uh, tomorrow night. What else has he done? Hellboy, well, he was, uh, Ron Perlman also played uh, Hell Girl, uh, Hell Dog, and just Hell. Hell Cow, Hell Mom, Helvetica, <laughs> type of print. City of Lost <laughs> Children in Happy Texas. Is no <laughs> yeah. Helvetica wasn't was. Is he a big guy? Or an action movie. Remember, action remember that movie. show, Beauty and the Beast. Beauty yeah. and the Beast. Yeah, yeah. Was, is is he a big guy? It's not as big as Hellboy. But I was as a Hellboy, all made up stuff. All, all, all. <laughs> I don't know. Is he <laughs> a big guy? I mean? <laughs> it's. I know it's a true story where you know. Uh, no, I mean, Hitler it, went went back uh, through some porthole uh, to uh, some hell. nether world yeah, and uh, tried to get, get Satan hell. to uh, stop the no, action. I mean, I mean, is he in real life like a wrestler guy type? type no, I don't. See? I, or was that all sort I of? I think he's in makeup? good shape. I don't know, Anderson. Well, in City of Lost Children, he was uh, portrayed as a as a giant. So there might be something to that. I don't know why no. he's cast. Right. Over I think he's like I think he's a he's a good side. Let's not make fun of him until we can see him. The Last Supper too was a great film that he was in. No, oh, okay. No, right. you well, like he's got that range. One. Last Supper and uh, Hellboy. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll see Ron uh, tomorrow night, and then uh, Paul Tracy, race car driver, is going to be in here, and then uh, Antonio Sabato uh, Jr. is going to be in here, and uh, yeah. All right. Tina Fey, The Darkness, Pennywise, Colby mm -hmm. from Survivor. Following week, Ready to Rock here, Drew. There we go. All right. Let's talk to Joey. Joey. Yeah. You're 18? Yeah. What's up, buddy? Well, um, this past Thursday, I was at, uh, I stayed after school with my art teacher, mm -hmm. and she she usually flirts with everybody, mm -hmm. but I think this thing, she took it a little too far, and I, and I didn't really care at that time, and I, she's like, because she was showing me how to do some drying or whatever, and then she just, all of a sudden, like, she kept rubbing her legs at my legs. Mm -hmm. And then she's, and then she's, like, out of so, out of nowhere, she's, like, take off my shirt. And then I just unzipped it up, off, and I started playing with her breasts. And she's yeah. like, what are you doing? And then she seemed like she, and then she just started to enjoy it. And started enjoying it. Right. Now I'm afraid she might accuse me of sexual harassment. No, uh, she is the teacher. She is the one in the position where you can be exploited. So no, yeah. she is the one that's going to get in trouble. Yeah. And and just so the cards, the table is not turned in some sort of bizarre way, because somebody that, that a teacher that's capable of that, God only knows what she might uh, pull. Yeah. In terms of saying you, not just you harassed her, but maybe you cornered her. Or oh, who knows man. what? And next thing you know, I mean, she. Th this is meter made publicist type. <laughs> Activity, you, you know what I mean. The, you, you have no respect for this, basically. You're saying zero, yeah, zero. And so you need to you need to go to the school. Oh, and I know. Hold on, yeah. is this but maybe bogus? No, I got. Can you I feel, believe him? I feel the confusion. Joey way. is eighteen. Uh -huh. no. Okay. Joey, uh, well, I wonder what the wattage uh, bulb Joey's got going up there. I'm guessing it's just one of those. Uh, yeah, whatever about the size of the one that's the uh, marker light on the fender of your car. Not the headlight, the marker one on the side. Uh, Joey? Yeah. Hey, did you have sex with her? No. Nah. I just... He just, he just fooled around. He just felt, felt her boobies. Yeah, then I, and then we just started kissing. And then and what? How did, how, how did it end? Somebody knocked at the door, and... That's when we just stopped immediately. Okay, and uh, you're 18, and you're a senior at high, yeah. in high school? Yeah. Did you get held back a grade? No. I just turned 18. Sometimes 18-year-olds. Yeah, no, I was, I was saying, just, if you just turn. But his his being 18 doesn't change the ethics of the circumstance. Not so. not really, but it's better than a 15-year-old. Yes, it's it's <laughs> not as, as troublesome. All right, now listen, here's my point. I don't think Joey is going to go narc her out. 
Yeah, he should. Are you? Um, I don't know. Well, do you want to do you want to go talk to uh, the principal about her behavior? Mm, I don't know. Cause Joy, are, like, Joy, are you are you are you a kind oh, of kid? Hold on a well, second. I'm going to ask him another yes or no question. I'm going to make a number two. Uh, during during in, that in time. Between. Okay. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Joey? Yeah. Um, is it cold in Chicago? Is it cold in Chicago? Oh, I'm going to go make. Okay, go. A, a little bit, not that much. No. Hey, he got that win in like 100 times faster. Yeah. All right, so, Joey, do you, okay, here's what I don't understand. You're calling us because you're worried you might get into trouble. You, are are you the kind of trouble guy where people expect trouble from you? No. Not really. What's that? No. No. You're, no. You're, you stay out of trouble. Okay. Yeah. Here's, here, here's my plan for you, Joey. My plan for you is to uh, not be alone with this teacher anymore. Yes. Um, get your grades, graduate, and go off to a nice junior college. Okay. This would be good for Joey. All right. So not safe. Okay. okay. I, we couldn't hear it. I don't know what that F Joey's. Uh, look, uh, they didn't have sex. Right. Okay. That sort of makes it better. Yes, the teacher screwed up. Um, yeah, the teacher might be screwing up with other kids. Yeah. yeah. Eh, these art teachers are just, you know, the, the art teachers and the shop teachers, they're just flunkies. But those are the ones you hung out with. I know. They're flunkies. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just, they're, you know, guys who got their contractor's license stripped and stuff and, you know, or hurt their back or something. And, you know, they end up teaching shop. The, the arts teachers are just, bas here's, here's, here's what art teachers are. First, they're artists. They're struggling artists who can't who can't make a living doing the art. And secondly, they take the gig because it's like free clay and free easels and free kilns and all the junk they wouldn't have access to. And then they just they get worshipped by a bunch of retards right. because they know something about clay or something about art. Yeah, It's nice, though. you got a bunch of 17-year-olds who, you know, think you're worth something. Yeah, all and right. you help them. And change. Them. Yeah, you could. What did yeah. you do for your holiday, by the way? I, uh, I, I threw stuff on the potter's wheel. Oh, you did? Th threw some pots? Good. No, yeah, but you, I, I did drive past a place, like uh, some trendy place, like on uh, Santa Monica or Melrose or something, where it was like some sort of a ceramic school. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, the guy, you know, you go in there and throw your pots on the potter's wheel, and the whole front of the facade is uh, is glass, and there's a guy sitting there. And I, and I thought to myself, uh, eh, it should be a shame factor. <laughs> Man should not be sitting in front of God and everybody throwing a pot. Like, uh, go ahead and put a screen up there or something, you know, hang a little bamboo. Put a little foil on the window so it seems like the guy's getting a BJ. Oh, God. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool, kind of gay at the same time. Went to Knott's Berry Farm on Friday. Yeah. Yeah, it was good times. <laughs> What'd you do? I, it was great. I, my, my kids are really into that stuff. They had a great time. But I, I realized <laughs> that... What a shock that they, you have 11-year-olds uh, that are into amusement parks. I'm mean, really into it, though. I mean, they like that. Well, every I, kid's I, really into it. I, and I realized as you age, it, it, gets more difficult. <laughs> it gets more difficult to tolerate those things. I get off right. I, I want to vomit. I got a headache. Oh. It's like... Yeah. Look, I, look. My kids just have the greatest time of their life. Yeah, I, I, I can't explain it. I, I go, well, I go with enthusiasm, and then get off, uh, barf over the ledge. I look. I've said this many times about these rides, and and, and about many facets of technology. Uh, we are not evolving fast enough to keep <laughs> up with right. this stuff. They're they're amazing. It, well, the point is, is y you're going 80 miles an hour. You're in some sort of inverted roll. You, <laughs> right. You're. You, there's a small part of your brain <clears throat> that understands you paid admission and you strapped yourself in and doing it, but there's a larger part of your body, the muscles, the fiber, yeah. the neurons that are firing and stuff, that think your car is rolling yes. off an overpass. Right, that's right. And you're going into a lake. You know, it's like it's you. You, you can't. Your your body tenses up. I yeah. mean, your body thinks. Your body feels like it's being thrown over a cliff. Your body thinks it's going over the cliff. Yeah, right. and, and, and the old, the aging brain gets like disoriented. So you can't, you can't reorient. You can't go. Oh no, no, I'll just fixate on this spot. It's like and I don't know where the hell I am. I don't. So think, I forget yeah, what amusement park. I'm not sure if it's a good idea for for your body to think it's being killed, because <laughs> that's what it is. That this is what roller coasters are. Mm. This is uh, we want to try to convince. Every part of you below your chin yeah. that it is dying, <laughs> and it's not a it's, it's not a slow and graceful death. It's not traumatic. It's not, not, you're not in bed with your uh, loving wife of forty years and your dog. No, you 
Your car's going off a cliff is basically what your body thinks. But we had a blast anyway. All right. Brought back. I, I had to educate my whole family to the, the, the history of the boysenberry. Oh. Which you educated me about. That's very fun. And their question was, how did Adam know that? Adam Adam knows because he didn't waste all his precious time in college. That's right. He looked around, kids. <laughs> He didn't. Uh, he didn't let the man force feed him his uh, ideology. He left his mind open, so it could think. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something about your mind, Drew. Yeah. Your mind's like one of those cars at Disneyland over at the uh, Autotopia. Yeah. It thinks it's driving, but it's, it's really just a bolt and a round wheel that you just spin it around as many times as you want. It's just going. It thinks. Whereas me, I'm a full blown bumper car, my friend. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, was, I was thinking about you this weekend too. I was, I was reading some stuff about IQ testing and stuff, and they were making a huge point about big how... big ninety three. Yeah, big ninety three. And they're making a huge point about uh, testing like that does not screen for exceptionality. Hmm. That if you are exceptional, mm-hmm. you can feel good about this, Adam. Mm-hmm. It will not pick you up. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, but how about the fact you that can't you're being singled up, out and punished? You can't about pick, not being picked can't, up. How about yeah. kicked in the nuts? You can't pick you up, pick up genius. Aha! So there you go. I've said, I, I, I've, I've been crowing this from the so, highest mountain. So I'll take my 140 IQ and, uh, and and head on out. Uh, That's uh, right. You head on out to Disneyland. <laughs> Let the geniuses stay home and create, or beat off and nap. Let's take a little seems break. To be the other thing that geniuses, I guess, like to do. That's if how you're I represented. Char- That's how I charge my batteries. That's good times. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, y'all. It's Loveline. Madam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All righty. Adam, there's no teacher-like experience. I'm that's you. right. I'm telling you. Ron Perlman, Hellboy, in here tomorrow night. Then uh, the great race car driver, Paul Tracy, will be in uh, on Wednesday night talking about that uh, Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach, no doubt. Oh, you were not uh, invited back this year? Wow. I guess it was, uh, I don't know what it might have been. Well, let me explain something, Drew. How dare you? Uh, The only way you get to come back and race two years in a row is if you won the previous year. Really? And uh, It seemed like there were some names there that kept showing up year in and year out. There are names that uh, show up every other year. Ah. And I'd have to look into it. This Mm. is what they said. I didn't ask this year, but they said at the beginning of uh, our year last year when I did the celebrity race, the winner gets, uh, the pro winner and the celebrity winner get to uh, come back and everyone else gets rotated. I would imagine there's plenty of years when they get a little desperate Mm. and uh, go ahead and flex that rule because, uh, look, who cares? And uh, you got to get, what's his name, the uh, buddy from uh, Fresh Prince. (laughs) In there. Yeah. The hell's Alfonso Ribeiro. He won a few years in a row. Well, okay, he's got a name like a Formula One driver. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Had an abortion. Let's check this out. Had an at home abortion? Right, I want to find out what that means. Allison? Yeah. You're 17? Yes. You had an at home abortion? Well, I tried. What does that mean? What did you do? Well, like. When I found out a couple of weeks ago that I was pregnant, and I told my best friend, and she said that um, that you can take a coat hanger, mm. and when you cut it, you can stick the long piece up there or something. And she didn't like go into details. So, so Allison, I decided... Allison, in the, in the days of yore when abortions were illegal, that was the, that was one of the sort of images that people conjured up as a way of defending the need to make abortions legal. Yeah. It's because women that did that routinely died. They did? So, yes. They bled to death. Oh, did they have, did they have coat hangers? I thought they only yeah. had wooden ones back then. Yeah. And so, back then was only 20 years ago. And so, uh, if you are pregnant and you in, are, are in oh, hell-bent on terminating, teeth. you can go anywhere you wish, go to Planned Parenthood. They will give you one. They will pay for it. And they will not tell anybody. You know, did you really use a coat hanger? Yeah. Yes. Really, really hurt, and it's. Oh wait, hold on. How? F- hold on. How? Eh, chicks can't do this, but right. how much of that coat hanger did you get in you? I didn't get that much in because it just started because I cut it with a wire hanger, so I could get oh. the um 
a wire cutter thing so I could get okay. the long so, part. So basically and, all, uh, you, all you do, Allison, is, is tear your vagina or tear your cervix. You will form infection. You can die. Forget the bleeding to death. You can get infection in there, get into your abdomen. It is a really super serious situation. It would be weird if a kid came out with like a Zorro on his forehead. <laughs> Just call like him like uh, Harry Potter or something. <laughs> something. Something horrible and unfortunate. And you need to get this taken care of immediately. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, Allison. What? Um, you're, uh, you're 17. I worry about you just a little bit. A lot. A lot. Well, I worry about you Im imminently for what you've done. I worry about the fact that you're having sex and you're not prepared to deal with it. I worry it, that you're that you're so. It was sick. actually the first time my boyfriend and I had ever had sex. All right, but I'm worried about the future. Are you doing okay? Are you going to school? Yeah, I'm in school. Okay, doing okay in school? I guess I'm okay in school. Mm -hmm. I mean. I don't know. My parents are really, like, strict and stuff, so I'm never, ever home, ever, and I'm out, like, getting every weekend. Oh, uh, okay, man. All right. That, that's, All that's, right. What, that's what Adam's talking about. All right. About, well, as, long as, as long as you're on your way to Yale. <laughs> Uh, that's fine. They, they, I'm sure they all got blacked out from the audience, but uh, she talked about how screwed up she's getting every weekend. And what a mess well, she said after. So. Okay, come on, everybody. <laughs> Just everyone stop, would you? First off, I... okay. Allison, please, get some, please get some help. Okay. Please get, get some help. Okay, get some help. Because also this sounds like addiction underway, too. So, it, Look, here's the thing, everybody. Um... We don't have crystal balls. We just have calendars that go five, eight years into the future. Okay? Don't look at it as a crystal ball that we have. Look at it as a magic calendar that we can we can go ahead we can go ahead five years, ten years and see what the things are gonna look like. You flip uh you flip forward a few years with uh Allison, it don't look good. I'm not sure the calendar even keeps going. Oh really? Yeah. May end. Mm. Well, well she, she keeps she experimenting really... on herself with coat hangers. Yeah, she's really in in a in a you know a desperate situation i mean yeah uh, all right take care of it please okay amelia uh 13 year old amelia yeah hi um hi um okay so what happened was i was with this guy and um we started making out and stuff and like um i i was like on top of him and um like his hand was down so i thought that he was fingering me Mm -hmm. And, um, but then I realized that it was his penis, and, um, as soon as I found out, I jumped up. But, um, we, he was, like, doing it for, like, 30 seconds. Wait and a minute. That's how, how I, I, That's I, my I, move. How could, Huh? And I don't think he came, because, mm -hmm. um, he, it takes, okay, so, like, this is the first time that I've ever done anything, and I'm so not, I was so not ready for sex, and, like, mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know, like, All right, and, so, so you were on top of him. Yeah. I should say you were not ready. And, and, and you yeah. couldn't tell the difference between him. No, because I've never, I've never been fingered before at anything. Like okay. the first time I've done anything with anyone. How old like, was this guy? Seventeen. Oh, All right. God. And why are we? Okay. Well. Uh, okay. No. Oh, and I know that. Like I thought about this, and like I know that. Like he he took advantage of me and everything, and like. Mm -hmm. And like it's not like we were going out or anything. It's just okay. Did you, all right. Uh, well, like all right. You made a mistake. Yeah, and I'm just like, and I'm scared because like he pre comes sometimes, and I was just like, you know. How about the morning whoa, after whoa, whoa. pill? He, I, I know. How do you how do you know his his history? Um, because he told me. Oh. What? But like, can can That's guys feel it? Conversation. <laughs> but what? Uh, maybe. Huh? What'd you say? Um, can guys under can do guys know if they pre or not? No, they don't. Not not usually. They know if they have that tendency, but that's it. Like, Adam knows he doesn't have that tendency. Yeah, it's like it's like asking the uh, guy in line in front of you if he knows he stinks to high heaven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they probably know they don't smell like a bar of Irish Spring, but they have no idea the effect it's having on you. <laughs> so, here's, um, Amelia, uh, so here's the thing. Uh, this was how long ago? Thursday. And and soon as you realized uh -huh. it was his penis, I, you I jumped. You jumped off, and then you did what? And like, and I just like, I was just like really shocked. And then he just, and then we went home. Like I went home. What about the morning after pill? Do you know what that is? I know what it is, but like, I don't know. I I don't have a car or anything. I don't want to tell my parents. 
Yeah. I was in New York. Um, like, I was visiting my dad, and I, and I met that guy. And, All right. Um, mm. Okay. Um, Horrible. Well, here's the thing. She's not pregnant. Let's hope not. Yeah, uh, like, and it's, there's, it's, there's not a good chance that I am, right? There's no, not a good there's, chance. There's That's not really not bad. even close to a decent chance that you well, are. Well, there's a chance. It doesn't mean it's not impossible. It just means there's not a good chance. And and you okay. you you're you got in over your head. How did you find out it was his penis even? Um, because um, his hand went like both of his hands are on my back. Yeah. Yeah. It could have been one hand, one penis. <laughs> back and see, that's what I'll do. Okay, look, we got to take a break. Yeah. Amelia, 13, don't Please grow up too fast. Slow down. You learn a good lesson. Yeah. You reacted. You got yourself in a bad shape, and then you reacted accordingly. Yeah. Be careful. Take it slow. Take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Ron Perlman, Hellboy, in here tomorrow night. Number two at the box office. I think it was number one uh, the week before. It's, uh, the kids love the comic books, Drew. I know. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> I have no idea what they're doing reading. Yeah, well. Uh, reading it's, little it's, cartoon squares. I, e, yeah. 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 yeah I don't know. I, e, e, Did I, you see American Splendor ever? No. It was a cartoon, yeah. Never, uh, never saw that, but... Uh, you know, it's the whole uh, fantasy, fantasy oh. baseball, and fantasy football, and card collecting, and comic book reading, and comic book collecting. It just, it, you're just not cool. That's all, Adam. I don't, or you're not a nerd. I don't know what it is. I, it involves reading, so I know I'm naturally, you know, sort of repelled mm. to anything that involves text or words. But I just uh, what the? So you're looking at a card? I don't. You, I don't know. Don't you want stuff? Don't you want a gun when you're a kid? <laughs> Here's what you should be doing. Here's what you should be focusing on. You should be wanting to shoot stuff, and you should be wanting to drive stuff. Mm. And you and break stuff or like destroy stuff. stuff. Destroy yeah. stuff. You should, you should start with, like, you know, mini bikes and then get your way into, like, go-karts and then work your way into, like, off-road stuff, motorcycles, and dune buggies. That, that, this is what you should be looking at. Mm -hmm. And then you should be wanting to hit stuff with a bat. The whole uh, sit around looking at the comic book and... Uh, Oh, well, oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Don't look to me. All right. Thomas? Yeah, hey, how are y'all? You're 17. What's up? Oh, Germany or Florida? Yeah, before I start, could I ask a quick question for Drew? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to know, uh, does somebody have to have the genetic predisposition to become an addict or, like, an alcoholic? Because, like, I kind of... Go ahead. Because well, what? I kind of gather that, like, you know, from a lot of stuff you said, it seems like that's what you kind of imply. Well, fundamentally, yes. I... I, I uh, meet about two new addicts a day on my unit. We have about two new admissions per day. I've been working, uh, I've been running my unit for 14 years, so I've treated about somewhere between seven and 10,000 addicts, and I've only seen one where I couldn't clearly see a genetic history. Okay. Yeah, but Drew, you're you're like a, a religious fanatic with the Bible trying <laughs> to make, every, you know, spinning it, making it fit. I mean, no. I've heard you on the radio yeah, before. Are you a real doctor? Or are you a love doctor? He's just a right. love doctor. Thanks, Thomas. No, well, no. Here, here's How what do you I'm... figure? I ask you, if dad or grandparents are alcoholism or addicts. Well, I bet I've seen you do that stuff where, like, did your parents physically abuse you? And they say no. And then you say, uh, did they ever uh, strike you? And they say, well, once they spanked me. Cause I... And you go, aha. Uh -huh. I'm just saying, if you're looking to make the connection, you'll have a much higher batting average. Well, unfortunately, and, and I think I, I understand what you're saying, but the reality is when it comes to things like traumatic upbringings, when it comes to things like parents using substances, people deny it. Yeah. You, you have to be like an attorney asking questions, knowing what the answers are. When you, you find it, it, it right. it's easily substantiable. So, all right. okay. anyway, be that as it may. So, right. for the most part, let's put it that way. Like, is, is dependence the same thing? Cause like, no. That, okay. No. Dependence is what happens late in the game. You start having, you get tolerant, you need more, you have withdrawal if you stop. That happens to all humans. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But, you, but the non-addict will get dependent, will stop, and then won't look back, won't be interested in continuing. Oh, okay. the, addict, the addict will be permanently changed. and will right. constantly be preoccupied about right. the drug. He's tired of his own question. I know. <laughs> he's, uh, he's 17. Germany yeah. or Florida? All right. Time, uh, to, time to get down to the important business. Right. These are sick and twisted from mm -hmm. too much sun and Nazis. Sex with and death fetishes. Both of them have got these. Guaranteed not to bore you. Germany or Florida? Hey, Anderson, didn't you miss that song <laughs> while you were away? I love that guy. Uh, yeah, I heard there was a new one. I haven't heard the show yet. No, no really. There is? 
No, I don't think there is. Somebody, Somebody tried. said they had one. Oh, yeah, but that was uh, that was a guy who was just scatting. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was just like, Germany, <laughs> oh, Florida, because Germany has Germans in it, and Florida has Floridians. Oh, yeah. It was like, huh? Yeah. What was that song, Drew? I don't know. I'll, we I'll were trying to. Yeah. I uh, listen to every single show that I miss. I have to go back and listen to the why? show. Why? Why? Oh, for best ofs and stuff. Oh, yeah. that is brutal. Oh, yeah. Anderson. You can't get next, some flunky to do that. For the next 14 hours of my driving existence, I'll be listening oh, to, to Brutal. Adam. Brutal. That is brutal. Go ahead, Thomas. All right. An obese cat, six times the normal weight, has gone on a hunger strike at an animal shelter after being taken from his owner, who had fed him four pounds of mint daily, the newspaper reported on Saturday. Uh, mint? Mint. Oh, mints. Yeah. Okay. The, the cat, weighing nearly 41 pounds, was brought to the animal shelter on April 1st and was so overweight he couldn't take more than four steps without becoming exhausted. His elderly owner was at the same time taken to a nursing home. Shelter mm-hmm. officials said the six-year-old cat is so fat he cannot clean himself and suffers from heart trouble. They mm-hmm. said he felt lost without his meat-feeding owner and stopped eating altogether when he was put on a diet to gradually lose weight. Stop eating because he didn't need to eat. Say what? What? He well, stopped eating because he didn't need to eat. Did he say he's, did he say he's meat feeding owner? Yeah, yeah. Didn't he say mint me- feeding? It, it says meat feeding. I don't right, know. So I guess. Is it, does he feed him mints or, or is he feed him meat or is it minced meat? First, first it says mints and then down here it says meat. So I don't know. Okay. Whatever. All right. Good All right. Times. Germany or Florida? Florida. Hold on a second. First off, I love a morbidly obese animal. <laughs> I do. It works. It doesn't work on people, but it works on pets. Hmm. There's nothing like a fat dog, like a big fat lab. Yeah. You know, like a, like a blonde lab that's like 20 pounds overweight. Yeah. And, it, you know, they're fat. They're more jovial. They their, move the tail around. starts sw- wagging, and they bend in the middle yeah. a lot. And, and, yeah, fat animals are usually in a better mood. They're kind of like people. You know, the fat guys have the good sense of humor. Skinny ones are the nasty ones. <laughs> You know, Chihuahua's always mean and nasty. Yeah. I like a fat, and a fat cat is nice, too. There's nothing worse than a bony cat. Yeah. I like a nice big fat cat. It's yeah. good, everything. Polar bears, everything. It's better. Fish. It's all better when they're fat. And then everyone's like, well, the dog will die two years earlier. Eh, you get another one. I mean, you are you know, if you do the math, you know, you live to 80, dog lives till uh, 14, you're going to have five of them anyway. So you have six. I think they're they're not just thinking about themselves as it pertains to the dog. They might be trying to protect the dog's well-being. Well, let me explain something about the dog. Please. Uh, dog would much rather eat all those table scraps and uh, have himself a good old time and not exercising and uh, gorging on uh, fatty meats and go 18 months early. <laughs> Ask any dog. Dog will tell you the answer. He's at the edge of the table. He knows what he wants. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it, it, it's weird when people get in and they get special diets for their dogs and stuff like that. And yeah, leave them a little fat. I like that. All right, you're going Florida? Yeah. Although the fact that they missed the translation, the meats and the mints, might indicate German. Ooh. Ah. There's a town in Germany called Mints. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's Mints. I pronounce it Mints. Okay, here's the point. I think that's a very crucial and interesting point with the mints mm-hmm. and the meat yeah, feeding. Yeah. I'm going. I'm going Germany All right, now. Good. All right, there you go. And I actually may have gone Germany anyway because it's a weird thing to feed a cat. All Mince. right, we're going Germany. Yes. Yes. Thomas, Thomas. your final answer. Germany. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, that's right. Ho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, are we good? Yeah. All right. All right, buddy. All right, thanks. Uh, let's try next time. Yeah, good times. Good times. Yeah, there was a translation problem with the mince and yeah. the meat. Yeah. Cat wouldn't eat mince. Doesn't seem like it. A cat's not going to eat Tic Tacs. Cat just eats meat. That's all they eat. Yeah, they, you can be eat other protein forms like you know milk and eggs and that kind of stuff. But then they'll lick a pizza or something just because it's got cheese on it. But they're not going to eat hard candies. No. Okay. Just meat, mince. Yeah. All right. Jennifer. Yes. Twenty-seven. Yes, I am. What's happening, baby doll? Uh, nothing. How are you? You know what I like about fat cats, Drew? What's that? You can make them sit down, like in your lap. 
You know what I mean? And they they'll actually, stay put. They actually sort of sit. You yeah. know, they sit like bean bags. You know, <laughs> they they become bottom heavy. They just they they're sort of they're more docile. You know, like yeah. a like a thin cat's like sort of wiry and always yeah. trying to get away. We had a thin cat got eaten by a bobcat, but he, that cat that cat. <laughs> Sorry, I know that nice. <laughs> and, and but that cat would eat so much. I mean, he was like bottomless. He would never gain a pound. No, he was, he was uh, smoking crack. He probably yeah, was. I, he seemed that way. The fat cat, you pull up on your lap, you sit him down like a human being, and he's, he ends up sitting like a panda bear. You kind of plop him down. You kind of plop him down and move him around a little. He ate my bobcat. Yeah, and you know that story. I know, but did you... Oh, yeah, it got wound, mortally wounded yeah, by... Yeah, my wife had to face off at the bobcat in the middle of the night. It was wow. crazy. I went out the backyard yeah. with a broomstick that's and a, a that's, kitchen knife. That's a draw. True. I got news for you. That is a draw. That's even money. My wife's quite a bobcat herself. That's I mean, right. she's, a, she's a tough lady. That's what I'm talking about. And uh, okay, so so uh, so the cat was wounded by the bobcat. Yeah. And uh, made it back in, but never. Oh no, no, you we found out. We tried it back in, but tried it back then. And then you found out it was going to be like twenty eight hundred bucks, and, uh, and it was just going bad. We, we no, no, we yeah. we kept them alive for several days. Oh they, yeah. Uh, All right, Jennifer. Yes. Go ahead. You're twenty seven. I am. Um. I just got married about uh, a month ago, and um, well, before that, I found out that my fiance at the time had um, he's got a a lingerie fetish. Mm-hmm. Lingerie and, fetish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means he likes to put on bras and panties. He. So he's not. That's not a lingerie fetish. That's he's a cross dresser. Oh, okay. No. Lingerie fetish would mean he likes you to wear it. Oh, no. Yeah, but that just sort of makes him a dude, you know. Yeah, but he, you know, yeah, whatever. okay, I'm I'm with you. Well, look, he, he, it's he odd for me. The blow. <laughs> uh, no, no, he, the fact that he likes to wear underwear doesn't make him a dude. What would make yeah. him a dude would be him requiring you to wear lingerie. Right, that right. Would be sort of an average kind of a thing. Even though guys are not into that particularly, really. Not as much as uh, Victoria's Secret mm-hmm. would that lead you to believe. <laughs> No, because well, they don't lead men to believe anything. They, they, men, all they're showing men is models they like. Well, let's put it this way: if one of those Victoria's Secret uh, angel models was, uh, you know, strutting around uh, the foot of your bed, you couldn't get her out of that goddamn bra fast enough. That's I the mean, point. That's the whole it's, thing. They're selling it to women. Get going. But they're leading women to believe that men like the lingerie because of who's wearing it. Yeah, we don't have a problem with the lingerie. We don't mind it. It's fine. It's a little bit of a push. It's more the super smoking hot Swedish chick who's in the bra and panties. Uh, I can think of plenty of women uh, that we would not like to see in the same bra and panties. If uh, our mom being at the top of the list and then moving its way down to uh, well, co-workers, family members, it, the list goes on and on. Uh, probably 99% of the population, the female population, we would not want to so see in that particular bra and there's panty, the irony. if you really think about it. There's the irony. The only ones you would want to see in it are the ones who you immediately want out of it anyway. Yeah. I mean, look. Eh? If you just go walk around. Yeah, Drew. Yeah. You're eh. right. Yeah. I know. You said one of the uh, Sopranos all of a sudden. That's uh, what I'm talking about. All, all I'm saying is, is go walk up and down the street. Uh, see if uh, nine out of ten women you see you don't want to see in those panties. You, you know what I mean? It's it's going to be at least nine. You're you're going to pass one about every uh, fifty chicks who you say, eh, "When am I going to look at her in that?" All right. Anyway, what the hell are we talking about? So he uh, now you he likes wearing it. You didn't now. know this about him before you got married? No, I did. I did. You did. did. Uh, yeah. Has it gotten more pervasive, more prominent as a fetish? Um, it has, yes. That's sort of the way fetishes go. They kind of take over. And um, you pulled the and trigger anyway on the uh, whole marriage thing. <laughs> I did. I mean, I love him to death. I don't sure. I don't want to lose him because of it, obviously, but it's something that just he wants me to be turned on by it, but it's just not happening. <laughs> Oh, yeah. and how about you put a, a strap on on and a wind up beanie and tell him he'd like him to be turned on? <laughs> I suggested that, and he said we could try, but I don't really want to do that myself. So you suggested the wind up beanie? No, no, not the, the strap. Wind- <laughs> the strap on. The strap on, <laughs> oh, and it was kind of like a, a sideways comment, just as a joke to see what he'd say. But you Mormon? And what did he say? He said she, she's confused oh, by the first question. <laughs> he said what? What did he say you about the strap? Try it if you really want try. to. 
All right, hold on. Right. Let me convene with Drew for uh, a second. Uh, Jennifer sounds smart. Strange, smart. Strangely enough. Smart for one of our callers, which makes her just mildly dumb. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. Uh, hey, we could try the strap on mixed with uh, i got to wear the lingerie. It's starting to make me a little nervous about the guy's sexual proclivity. The fact that he was willing to try the strap on. Now, I think I think his thing is, I, I don't know, you may be right, but it sounds like he just needs her so badly to be in his fetish realm with her. He's willing to let her do whatever she wants to do. Hmm. So, Jennifer. Yeah. Would he wear uh, women's lingerie, let's say, under his clothing and go to work? No, I don't think so. It's just during a sexual act with you. Right. I think his whole thing is he always, the whole scenario always starts off with he wants me to catch him in the act of wearing it. It's like the embarrassment oh part. Oh, my. And how, it's like the shame part. Yes. And, right, and, exactly. And so how. The it, way mommy caught him when he was four. I blame his mother. <laughs> no sure. kidding. Because if, she's very domineering yeah. and very, very yeah. aggressive. That's what happened. There you go. Uh, it, so his scenario, his ideal scenario, sexual scenario, would work out how? Oh, his ideal scenario would work out. Um, he would be in our room with the lingerie on, probably watching a porno, and I walk in on him like coming home from work or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and and you would find that arousing. Right, right. That that he would need that to be. Well, part of first that. you would first there would be some shock and a little exactly. shame, and then and then arousal. Exactly. All first right. would be the, the initial shock, and then yeah. Have you been acting this fantasy out with him? We've done it once or twice, and I kind of act my yeah. way through it, but it just it probably it probably feels uh, sort of weird, he's disgusting. A very, when he... He's a very masculine man, and to see him that way just kind of takes away some of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, no look, kidding. Jennifer, you have the. Uh, the flexibility of taffy yeah. to be able to go along with this because uh, <laughs> most women really couldn't. Mm. Yeah, yes, I agree with Drew. You're an intelligent person. You're in love with the guy. Uh, Get him some therapy, please. Yes, therapy. Get him some therapy. And 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 not and and. But the, the therapy isn't hey uh, hey hey thong back here's get some therapy. It's more like you got issues with domineering mom. Focus yeah. on mom. Go to therapy and, and realize that the fetish diminishes intimacy, and you're feeling that vividly. It's like you get kind of weirded out and disgusted. And you he his his sort of who he is is diminished by it in your eyes, and which is kind of what he wants. It's just but it's how, a lot of craziness. How does this work? I mean. Uh, I don't know. I you know I, I feel like your position has changed on this a little bit Me? over the years. Me? No, I'm talking to Chris, the engineer. My position has changed. I'm listening. Meaning, maybe our, our position. Like uh. at a certain point, we're like, well, you just do the fetish and, and you sort of contain it, and uh, you know well, what, what goes on in the bedroom and behind closed doors is uh, your business kind of thing. I think it depends on the fetish and how much it's overtaking. But I, 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 I'm starting to think that we we're feeling like this is almost like as if a person said, "Look, I got to be high to make love." Yes. And w in, in which case you would say, "Well, that, that something's got to be done about that." Yeah. Not uh, go ahead and get high well, every but, time you. But make on the love. other side, if, if he said, oh, "On a special occasion, once a year, I want to do that," all right, but, as long as you're okay the rest of the time, it's sort of able to be intimate. But if you're not, and you need the fetish, or the fetish is affecting the intimacy, then no. no. So I, I start. I'm starting to think because of these calls we've heard that these things have a certain momentum. Oh yeah. And that once they get just a little water and some fertilizer. They take over. They they start to take over. It's a little, so, little house of terror, a little house of horrors. Right, yeah. little shop, little shop of horrors. Right. So instead of saying, "Well, it's your birthday," I'll let you put on the stiletto heels and the uh, and the backless uh, panties. Instead, maybe you should say, "No, no, this is this, this is a, a horse yeah. we're keeping in the barn." Yeah. And if you if it has to come out, uh, maybe we got to look into things first. Yes. Yeah. All right. Where are we going, Drew? I guess, uh, let's think about it one quick second, but what if both of them had something gratifying out of it? I what? think if both of them uh, have something that's gratifying about it and it doesn't involve strangulation yeah. or some sort of a branding with a hot brand of poker or something. Just those two things. Yeah. If it doesn't involve doing any potential damage right. to anybody and uh, they're able to sort of contain it, yeah. then so be it. Although we both know that that one's going to spin out that will break down just too. a little bit, yeah. too. Because again, as we've always said, they don't they don't occur as an isolated phenomenon. Right. So all right, someone's been on hold for 103 minutes. All right. Twelve year old for the love of Christ, Drew Anna. Hey. 
Hey, Anna. You're 12. Yeah, I'm 12. Oh, my. Calling from St. Louis. Yeah, St. Louis. Was that two-hour time difference? Oh, uh, probably, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, listen, I didn't even know. Like, I was telling Drew this. I, I, I was 30. I didn't know if New York was three hours ahead or behind. Like, <laughs> the time differences, uh, I couldn't get out of. I my Here's my, uh, I went from North Hollywood to Van Nuys to Valley Village. Those are like my three, you know, it was about as far as I got. Oh, I, nice. I no idea what the Central and Eastern and Mountain. <laughs> All right, well, baby. I don't doll. blame you. I don't know the like the other time zones. I'm I know. Confused you're, that. you're 12. You'll be 13 and a half, and you'll know. I was 30. What's up? <laughs> yeah. What's up? Um. Well, um, I'm bulimic, mm -hmm. and there's like all of these people trying to help me. Yeah. And my parent, my parents are real nice and caring about this stuff, and they like give, take me to therapy, but the therapists, they like. Get on my nerves so much. Yeah. Yeah, good. In what way? Why? Well, they just push it so much. I, push I what? Much, like the issues that I have. Like people in my class, they think that they used to be all my friends. I used to be pretty popular. Yeah. And um, but then now, they believe start. me, is throwing up, right? Or am I screwing this up again? Mm -hmm. Binging and purging. Yeah, yeah, binging uh, yeah and purging. Bin, you binge a lot and then you purge and it's like this cycle. And then once you purge, yeah. you feel bad. And then you binge again. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. All right. And so, right. like, oh, okay, you want to speak? Okay. Well, no, no. I, I'm, I'm just... Brand is so, I, she has to be so perfect for everybody. Yeah. What's up? Your parents, are they doctors and attorneys or oh, something? Oh, no, no, no. They're, my mom doesn't work and my dad's a lawyer. That would be an attorney. That would be an attorney, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. I mean, look, Sorry, I could have got, I got half flat. a no, but it didn't, get, didn't need three no's. Oh, no, 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 no. Lawyer, no, no. He's he's an attorney. I'm oh, sorry. I'm 12. <laughs> Give me slack, okay? Oh, oh baby doll. Yeah, You're 12 no. going on uh, eh, 15. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go nuts, you know, with the 25, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, all right, so your dad's an attorney. See, attorneys, uh, they put a lot of pressure on uh, people they live with, you know? They do. They're really kind of bothersome. My yeah. dad, like, mm -hmm. he, he'll try to butt in on therapy. Like, I'll be talking with my therapist. Well, yeah. I'm, like, half screaming at her, kind of cursing sometimes. And, mm -hmm. like, he'll butt in saying, is everything all right? And then yeah. he'll, like, try to check on me and, like, examine me. And when I get home, he'll be like, Anna, why were you yelling? And all that crap. And yeah, well, look, he, he's, uh, here's the problem with attorneys. Uh, hold on a second. Who's worse, attorneys or publicists in terms of entitlement? Like, attorneys, attorneys, well, they don't have, attorneys think they're the smartest person in the room. Wherever they are, they think they're the effing smartest person in the room. And they think, it, it, because their whole thing is like, well, it's not really about being right. It's just about being able to talk someone else out of something or talk a third person into agreeing with me. It's not really about who did what or who's right or who deserves this or what anyone deserves. It's, I'm, so, I'm, I'm a genius. That's it. And then whereas the publishers just have this horrible, uh, huge sense of entitlement where they think they are the celebrity that they're representing. That, that's it. But they're both horrible, wretched, wretched, wretched people. Uh, but the point is, is I, uh, attorneys will give their kids uh, eating disorders, mm -hmm. I think. And in general, disorders, maybe more so than any profession. I would say publicists, but they're all gay, so they don't have children. Well, the, uh, I, the experience I have sometimes with attorneys is that is because they're geniuses, emotions and emotional process don't exist. Right. As far as they're concerned, if you try to educate them, it's right. rejected outright. That's hocus pocus. Right. How dare you? All right, baby doll. If my dad heard you, he'd be like going crazy right now. He'd sure grab me for another yeah. five months. All right. Uh, well, uh, listen, you're, you're 12 years old. Yeah. And uh, you want us to cut you some slack for being 12. Um, how about you cut yourself some slack for being 12 and start being 12? Okay. And, and and give your therapist some slack too. I mean, this is a treatable condition. It's a chronic condition, but it's a serious condition, and you can you can die from it. So the fact your parents are taking you to therapy is a very positive yeah, thing. The fact like, they're participating your is dad, positive. Your dad's not the uh, world's greatest guy, but uh, Look, listen listen yeah. to the show for ten minutes. Most dads aren't even in the picture. Right. You should be very pleased your dad is not only in the picture, but is supporting the treatment and paying for the treatment. Yes. And eating disorder treatment is a is a cumbersome process. It takes multiple people over long periods of time. Mm -hmm. And and go ahead and cooperate with it. They, they, they're not doing it. The re things they're saying, the recommendations they're, not, they're making are not sort of casual. It's not just, you know, by way of sort of amusing themselves. 
These are really serious issues that they are trying to help you manage. Yes, let them help you. Yes. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Yeah! Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. It's Dr. Drew. Phone number. All right, now, Dave. Say what? I can tell you, but I have to kill you. <laughs> so, uh, said to Jack Drew, you know, I'm uh, draining the main vein. I was like, whoa, 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 you in one army, but I was like, hey, am I right, buddy? Seven twenty-two. That's uh, twenty-two after seven. The weather and traffic coming up. Skinner super set. Skinner super set. Yeah, this is me. All right, Dave. Dave's got time. Dave's his girlfriend got lip, multiple orgasms. Of- <laughs> I wish I was in on that. I was up with them. 17. I was humming on that. Multiple. I'm on that. Multiple. I'm on that. I'm on that. I'm on The only multiple orgasm I've ever seen was a humming on that. I'm on that. I'm on that. I'm on that. <laughs> okay, 724, 24 after 7. Bob's <laughs> well, weather and traffic coming up. Bob's is up Anyway, Dave, uh, uh, well, I'm going to have a story. Hold on, hold on a second. Sorry. Hold on a second. 17 years old, and I'm walking in some of Now, I'm 17, so you imagine me, and I'm some of And I'm looking around right this place, and I'm looking at my guys who are 24, 24, 24, 24, 26 after 7. And I'm saying to myself, hey, and I'm thinking, <laughs> you ever have those days when your mouth says, but your brain's going, <laughs> 727, 27 after 7. <laughs> Weather and traffic coming up. The news coming up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean you're, you're thinking, <laughs> but your mouth says, but your mouth says, <laughs> 728, 20 F7. All right, let's go to the phone. Let's get right. back with Dave. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You ready to hop back on yeah. the phone with him? <sighs> Nobody wants to hear it. Okay, Dave. Dave, <laughs> no, 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 no. no, let me tell you something. No, about, no, no. No, let me, no. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you about the engineer Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he says, well, blah, 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 blah. and you know, when you see him in person, he's like, hey, blah, 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 blah. but then as soon as you turn your back on the guy, it's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Where's, you know, so the little, the little, the little, the little, the little, the Chris over here, and Engineer Chris is like, blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm always like, hey, Chris, blah, 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 blah. and Chris is like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, blah, 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 blah. and he's like, blah, 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 and you know the thing about Anderson, dude, talking out both sides of his mouth. One side of his mouth is like, hey, blah, blah, blah. But the other side is like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> He's two-faced, Drew. Do you know what I'm saying by two face? When he's in the room with you, he's like, hey, it's all blah. But as soon as you know he's hanging out with his buddies. Drinking a beer, like, hey, uh, what do you think of Adam Crow? Oh, well, Adam Crow gets my saliva, man. <laughs> you're very close, dude. You're really close. <laughs> 731, 31 after show. That, am I right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's almost, it's almost. yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Right, that cool, is right? radio, man. That is radio. It's good radio. Yeah, that's great radio. That's why I listen. They train you to do that, right? Mm-hmm. That's how you train. Broadcaster. Broadcast is cool. Dave? Yeah. Am I on the line now? Yeah, yeah, you're on. Yeah, Sorry, buddy. Oh, okay, yeah. sweet. Um, Just um, Anderson was talking off, smack. So. <laughs> I want to start off by saying, Adam, you are a genius comedian. I don't mean to give any arse, but, you know, well, you know thank give you. credit where credit is due. Thank you. Drew, you're don't, pretty don't. smart. I'll give you that. Yeah, thanks, um, 
Well, as far as my situation, uh, my girlfriend tends to uh, claim that she has, on average, about three to a max of about five orgasms during sex. Right. And uh, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm above average, but I'm not gigantic. And uh, No, that, that would have nothing to do with it. Well, uh, I mean, if I was just wondering, as far as you guys are concerned, because, you know, my friends... Yeah. No, listen, I don't believe him. Their girlfriend yeah. ha has, you know, orgasms maybe one every ten times during sex, and I, I, I look her straight in the face. Right. And no. Let's put a hold on it. Let's, let's bring it up. All right, let's put a hold. Right. hold, hold. Dave, bogus. Yeah. Bogus. Anyway, but the hold. Put him on. Bogus. All right, let's, let's not even give oh, it up. <laughs> Here's the deal. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Hold on yeah. a second. I've seen Drew punch the mic before, <laughs> this was, this was like every birth. goddamn night, but this was... Uh, right hook to the body, fall to the left uppercut. Yeah, yeah. This is this is two two it's two, like two prong yeah. attack. Yeah. Um, here's the deal. Uh, as as we've often discussed, is that most women in their late teens and early twenties do not have orgasm during intercourse. Though there's a subset of about ten percent or less that have multiple orgasm and ruin it for the rest, and have somewhere between three and like twenty. Some of them will orgasm repeatedly during intercourse, and some have like a couple or three, mm -hmm. which seems to be Dave's girlfriend, alleged girlfriend. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's this huge diversity of how women respond during sex, and most women throughout their life will not have orgasm during intercourse, but only have it with some sort of direct stimulation. Mm -hmm. And no one really discusses this except this show, strangely enough. Mm -hmm. the, the, and, then, and then women that have multiple orgasms think that their friends that have difficulty having orgasms are somehow lying about it or like, like not telling yeah. the truth or ashamed to talk about it. Well, and the ones that don't have an orgasm or f don't master it because it just doesn't, doesn't work, doesn't, doesn't do anything for them. And we don't help those girls along to how to you know, ultimately <clears throat> function sexually in their relationships. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. so, so what do we do? We, we help. I think they just help women communicate amongst themselves and build a language that they can use amongst themselves to support one another, explain well, to one another about what they do. You know that language is going to go, Drew. Oh, God. That one Sally's going to say, Sabala? <laughs> and then Cindy's going to reply, Sabala, Sabala. And then Cindy's going to say, well, I have a, you know, a multiple. <laughs> that's, that's what it's going to sound like, Drew. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> All right. Let's, oh, uh... Huh? Yeah, there you go. Uh, Avia? Uh -huh. Is that Avia there? Avia? Avia. Avia. Yeah. yeah. You're uh, 15? Yeah. What's up? Hi. Hey. Hi. Um, hey. So you want to know my questions? That will sure. be good. Okay. I have two of them. Um, well, yesterday I lost my virginity. Mm -hmm. And, well, the first one is I want, mm -hmm. I want to know when the um, reality will sink in. The reality of what? Of losing it. Like, I, st You're in I, I still can't believe it. You know? You're in denial of it. Oh. Well, not in denial, oh. just like kind of <laughs> shocking. All right, well, uh, was it uh, traumatic? No. Okay, well, reality sunk in. It, Do you know when it will? Uh, Yeah, May of uh, 2021. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I don't know, just... Will the fact that you are dissociative, you dissociate from the experience to the point where you cannot accept it as something that actually happened. Yeah, it's suggests, a bad sign. Yeah, it's not a good sign. It means you're not ready for this. I would say slow down, s chalk this one up to some sort of experience, put it on the shelf for a little while, realize you did it, and just hang out for a couple of years here and wait till you really are quite a bit older well, who, and have a stable relationship yeah. and then think about those. Who'd you again. do this with? My boyfriend. Oh, how, how long have you guys been going out? Three months. How old is he? Fifteen. Nah, nah. Yeah. He kind of got forced into it, huh? Well, not forced, but... But, I mean, he really pushed, you know. Not really. He just asked a few times. So and I... begged, and begged, and begged. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, that's what we're talking about. All right. I know he didn't mean, he didn't want to violate you or make you no. feel yeah. pushed into something. <laughs> of course, you know, he's a good guy, I understand. Yeah, but, but how do you, uh... Once you sort of, you know puncture a uh, hole in the uh, membrane that uh, well let's let's uh, look at the hymen use that as a little bit of a metaphor let's look at that hymen as more of just a dam that you now uh, backed your car into and uh, punctured a hole into it yeah and it and water's just coming out yeah yeah it, it's really hard to stop that water now well it's hard for the guy mm -hmm. it's not so hard for the woman well that's true but it makes it hard for the woman because the it makes it so hard for the guy that he won't leave her alone. 
But he already wouldn't leave her alone. You know what I'm saying? That, that, I, I'm just saying it is. Yeah, it, I understand. But now they're going to be they're going to be tied together in a way. Can, that, can you can you stop? I mean, can you not have sex with him anymore? Well, yeah. Okay. It'll be smart. It, it, the, the kinds of feelings you're going to have, the kind of way you're going to be connected to him, is going to be overly intense for 15. I would yeah. say. And you know, maybe you're ready for it. Maybe you're not. It sounds like you're not. Just the way you're reacting to it. You know, the problem with guys really oh. is. The, f the first experience for the girl is usually um, Mar so underwhelming. Marginal, yeah. So marginal yeah. at best <clears throat> that uh, it becomes like a bad restaurant that your boyfriend keeps wanting you to go back to. And you're like, I listen, I threw up last yeah. time I went there. Hey, come on, let's go try it again. And you're yeah. like, uh, it's got a D rating please, up front. Please, please, my window. favorite. Oh, please. I love a lot more there. Yeah, really, I, Let's just get some. Let's get some uh, drive through then, or something. Then he gets moody and irritable. If he right, go. right. <laughs> I mean, but you know what I mean. It's like you don't want to go back to a restaurant you had a bad experience at. You know, and <clears throat> guys could never figure this out. But if they uh, a uh, you know what they just gave the chick a nice twenty minute back rub oh, and yeah. said, uh, oh no, this is all part of the package. Yes. This is what uh, intercourse is. Yeah. It starts off with twenty minute uh, back rub. Yeah, they can't they can't uh, do it. Then it's uh, ten minutes of just uh, compliments about your <laughs> nails and then it's uh, into a good uh, you know twenty minutes of That's oral actually a sex. Good point, that we it's don't like, yeah, it, we don't we don't <clears throat> teach the guys what the women Yeah. Because we all we teach guys is that they're the same. That what the girl wants is what you want. Same right. thing, same Meanwhile, thing. Meanwhile, you got some guy with a pizza face uh, retainer. He's all uh, knees and elbows. He's on top of you, basically having a seizure. <laughs> and uh, you're supposed to go running back for seconds for that? Yeah. Get that massage in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now you dangle a little carrot out there on that stick. Yes, at, sir. at least there's something in it for that. Yeah. All right. Have a good time. Let's take a break. We'll be uh, right back. After this, hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Hellboy, Ron Perlman, in here tomorrow night. <clears throat> we'll uh, talk to him about that, and let's go to the phones now and speak to Zach, who's 17. Zach, uh, hey, how you doing? Zach's been on hold for 112 minutes. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Uh, you have a fear of girls. Yeah, it, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. Now, let me ask uh, this uh, to my uh, colleague, Dr. Drew, when he's done yawning. Um, when you have uh, a fear of women, don't you, aren't, aren't you sort of generally a shy person? I think usually it You're boils down. You're not captain of the speech and debate right. team. Although, I mean, every 17-year-old guy has trouble with women. Well, you're, you're, what you're building a case for is a, of a social phobia. There's some sort of either a problem with social skills or an actual social phobia. Yeah. I, I also generally feel that more often than not, there's fundamental issues of self-esteem. Yes. At, at the problem here. Absolutely. Zach? Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I can't <laughs> even breathe around them. Okay, well, how um, how uh, how are you when you're not around women? Are you doing okay in school? No. No. Do you have friends? Uh, yeah, few. Few. Why is that funny? Troublemakers? Uh, no, not really. No. Um, they're good guys. Oh, okay. And well, what's wrong with you in school? Why aren't you doing well? I don't know, man. I try. But yeah. I turn everything in, but I just uh -huh. get bad grades, and I don't. All right, well, that's what I would do. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like you're not being that. You're just not that smart for school. All that's right. your thing. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Um, the best way to get confidence with women is to get confidence in general, which means doing something well. You know that you feel good about that you felt right. that you have worth. It can be sports. Of. It can be art. It can be <laughs> acting. It could be playing a playing an instrument. It could be anything other than being a good person. <laughs> They'll turn on you. Is there anything you like, Zach, that you're good at? Um, basketball. Basketball. There you go. Now, can you can you play for the team at school? Uh, no. There's a bunch of black dudes, and they're all really good. <laughs> so you're no. not good enough to play. So you're, not, you're not good. You just you just like it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, what's, well, what about something you excel at? Oh no. Okay. 
I don't well, how about know. finding something you excel? If you feel very passionate about something you yeah. really are into. I mean, here, here's the here's the whole thing, uh, fellas. If you're not good with the ladies, um, don't do not sit around and focus on not being good with the ladies. Focus on being good with everything else, and the ladies will magically find you, right. or at least it'll work its way out. Right. Which is all right. You're not doing good with the ladies. Good. <clears throat> focus on your career. Right. Uh, focus on uh, school. Focus Absolutely. on your hobbies. Focus on getting good at something because really that's what women are looking for. And people think, oh, women, oh, they're like the rich guy. They're like the rock star. They're like the actor. No, they just like guys that are good at stuff that are doing their own stuff and not focusing on them. Quite right. honestly. Right. There's nothing more attractive than a guy who's just focusing on his career, his life his uh his muse his art his school is whatever and then they just see you busily working away you you just focusing on them just makes it worse right it makes you feel i mean like you've said if you, they, they want somebody to sort of make them feel safe and lead and that kind of thing oftentimes yeah, i think they also like the idea that some they, they like not being noticed to a certain extent to well, a they, certain they, level they don't want to take care of somebody they want to be taken care of many times yeah, what, what many i'm members. saying is is there's there's nothing better than a, a woman spotting a guy before the guy spots the woman and then the woman spotting a guy when he's immersed in something right. that he's into true Working out, yeah. you know, playing his instrument, whatever, whatever's cool to them. Yep, you're right. You know what I mean? Yep. For me, it'd be napping. Oh yeah, they'd spot that in a second. They see the passion <laughs> with which you, with yeah. which the vigor mm. and and the the verve in which I nap. <laughs> oh yes. And then Zach, there, there is napping. there are medic. If you really have a cannot function socially, there are medications also that can sometimes help you get over the hump, so to speak. Jennifer. Yeah. You're 18. Yeah. What's up? Um, I've been masturbating since the age of five, and uh, I kind of wanted to know, like, if it was because of, like, my surroundings or if it was just a mental thing. Because you're... You well, a mental family? thing is usually because of your surroundings. What happened in your surroundings? Um, I would hear my parents having sex, like, in the room over. Well, not my parents, but my mom and her boyfriend. Yes. Yeah, that can mess with you a little bit. Yeah. There were... They... They were over you. You were downstairs. They were upstairs. They were next door to me. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, worse. You put the word stairs in there. All right, um, that's bad times. Yeah, that that see when when kids get overtly sexualized at a young age, it kind of affects their wiring a little bit. So I think I, you know, because we always lived in uh, like eight hundred square foot dumps. So I think, uh, but then my parents had the decency never to get laid. Right. So it sort of worked its way out. Right. <laughs> You were lucky, see? You thought you were, you thought you were a miserable. Although, I, I heard, when I was in one of my dad's uh, crappy North Hollywood apartments, I heard a woman get the bejesus banged out of her for all night. Something by the neighbors or something? Yeah, oh, and I thought she was sick. Oh, I remember you, you told the story. Dad, I mean, the neighbors are sick. I mean, I mean uh, all I heard was, just, I mean, you know, from, from 1230 at night till 330 in the morning, it was just, oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 no. oh, oh. I mean, it's like crazy. You know, these, these oh. crappy uh, 70s, oh. you know, cardboard boxes, you know, with this long adjoining wall. You know, oh. you have a whole, you have a crap apartment suck, by the way. Oh. had like a long hallway. It was like the entire length of the apartment. You know, if you put your fist to it, it'd be in the other person's living room, you know. And, yeah. and this chick just got, you know, but, but first off, they're living in this crappy apartment, too. So they're probably high. Or have some sort of mental defect or something like my family, right. and they're just getting the bejesus banged out of them at four in the morning. And I'm just, I'm just sleeping in the lit. You know, it was a one bedroom or something. You asked your dad about it. He said, "Right." I said, "We got to call a doctor." <laughs> this woman is sick. What'd your dad say? I, you know, I pictured her sort of grabbing her abdomen and moaning in pain. All this, is, you know, when you're a kid, that's about that's all you can do is like she probably ate Try too to make much sense of it. She ate too much cotton candy. You now she has a tummy ache. <laughs> What did you finally she must realize? Have been at Disneyland. <laughs> what did you finally realize that there was a problem? That what it was? I, I remember my dad giving me a sort of a uh, half an answer, like um, maybe a little more than I needed, but nothing too much. And I remember thinking, uh, yeah, I see. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna start having that with your kids, Drew. Uh, they're, they're at that weird age where stuff starts dawning on them, like yeah. halfway into the conversation. You know, my kids have the decency to go, oh no no no. no. Or yeah. just laugh hysterically. Yeah, I tried. I tried. Uh, All right. Where were we? Oh, Jennifer. We're taking a break. Yeah. But what's up with Jennifer? All right. So Jennifer? what's the question, Jennifer? What, what are you asking us? 
So is it perfectly fine and perfectly healthy that I started that young? Yeah, it, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Yeah. Just, here, here's, here's the question. Can huh? you maintain stable relationships? The relationship is no, all I can't. This, That's the uh, thing, too. Well, but, that, but again, that may have more to do with the crazy mom and the God knows what kind of family system you had there and the mom that would choose to have sex in the room next to you and let you hear it. No. The fact is, our, whatever def- problems we have tends to emerge most clearly. I'm Anderson, relax for a second. In relationships, and if you can have stable relationships that are satisfying over time, you're doing okay. And if you could try to force yourself into that, to stay, you know, easy, choose good people, stay in the relationships, and you're able to do that, then don't worry about it. Yeah. If not, get some treatment. Drone and true. Yeah. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Everybody, that's the show. God bless you for uh, listening. Ron Perlman, Hellboy, yeah. in here tomorrow night. Kids throw that movie twice in one weekend. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. One side of his mouth is like, hey, blah, 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 but the other side is like, hello, blah, 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 blah. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.